On to section B now, question 14.1. This one is about standard costing and variance analysis. Ebo Limited manufactures two products. The finance director of Ebo, Ebo, I don't know how you say it, Limited provides the following information about product A. In May 2022, they expected to be able to make and sell 2,850 units, but it actually made and sold 3,100 units. So that's the actual output. Now, be careful with this one. This is the forecast level of output, forecast sales figure. The only time you ever really need that when we're doing variance analysis is for the sales volume variance. Okay, we don't need it for regular variances. All our materials, quantities, and our labor hours are going to be based on the number of units we actually made and sold. Okay, so it gives us some information here about the standard cost per unit. So we expect to sell for 80, direct materials are 18, direct labor are 24. So we could work out contribution per unit. And then we've got some actual figures here. We've got the actual sales and we've got the actual amount paid for materials and labor. And what we're asked to do, this is a bit unusual, this question, rather than doing the materials price and the materials usage and the labor rate and the labor hours, uh, the labor efficiency, sorry, we're being asked to work out the total um, materials variance and the total direct labor. So all we've got to do is work out the standard cost of so what we expected to pay for materials and compare that with what we did. So the standard cost for materials, sorry, it's all gone a bit wonky. Standard cost is uh, £18 per unit. Okay, so this is per unit there. So £18 per unit. And we're going to multiply that by the number of units we actually made and sold. So £18, trusty calculator here, times 3,100 units is 55,800. The actual cost, though, is given to us there. It's 51. 150. Now, because the actual is lower, that's going to give us a favourable variance of 4,650. Please make sure you label your variances FAV for favourable, ADV for adverse or something similar. Make sure it's clear. Don't just put pluses and minuses. Actually, you know, you could write the whole thing favourable, adverse, but I think just A or, or F clearly labelled would be quite sufficient. Um, we can do the same for labour. So the standard cost for labour... This was getting a bit blunt here. £24 a unit times the 3,100 units we've actually made and produced. So the 2,850 is irrelevant there. So 3,100 times 24. The labour for that quantity of output should have been 74,400. The actual cost for labour was 75,950. So we can see there this is going to be an adverse variance. 74,400. Minus the 75,950 is 15,550 adverse. OK, so the next variance we've got to work out is the sales price variance. So remember, with the sales price variance, it's the standard price minus the actual price times the actual quantity of units sold. Now, the standard price gives us here £80 is the standard price. The actual price we're going to have to work out. So it's 241,800. We're going to divide that by the 3,100 units we actually sold. So that is £78 per unit. OK, and we're multiplying. I don't want to put a pound sign there. Let's get rid of that. And we're multiplying that by the actual number of units. So each unit sold for £2 less than the standard. So this is going to be an adverse variance. So 3,100 so it's going to be an adverse variance of 6,200. Sales volume variance is the standard quantity, what we plan to sell, minus the actual quantity, and it's times by the standard price. So the standard quantity, we plan to make 2,850. We actually made 3,100. That means we're going to get a favourable variance, which is going to be the extra units, so 3,100 minus 2,850 means that we made and sold 250 units more than we planned, times the £80 is a £20,000 favourable variance. Okay, so that is part one of the question completed. Now on to part two of the question. So the finance director provides the following information about product B this time. So we can ignore everything we've just done for product A. This is all based on product B. So in May, they expected to make and sell 6,000 units, but they actually only made and sold 500 units. So we've actually got a shortfall there 
of 500 units. So we made and sold 500 fewer units than we planned. We've got some information about the standard cost per unit. So we've got the selling price and we've got the direct materials and the direct labor. Now, if we take one away from the other, or we'll take the 55 pounds and deduct the direct materials and the direct labor, that means that the contribution per unit is 33 pounds 30. And we're gonna need that in a minute because we're gonna be reconciling the budgeted profit with the actual profit. Now, if we have a look down here, it gives us some information about the actual results. So the sales revenue was 319,000, materials and labor cost there. The actual contribution achieved, 198,814. Fixed overheads were 48,000. And the actual profit there, so that's the actual profit, 150,814. They also give us the sales price and volume variances and they give us the direct materials and the total direct labor variance. Now we need to be careful with the volume variance because our profit is not gonna be reduced by the entire amount there. Our profit is only gonna be affected by the 500 unit shortfall. There's an adverse variance still, but not anywhere near as bad as that, times the contribution per unit. So actually when we come to do a reconciliation statement, we only wanna include 16,600 and 50 for the sales volume. So that is what we call lost contribution. So the sales volume variance, that's how you work it out in its entirety. So using the full um, selling price times the, or the, the standard selling price times the number of units that you're short. But when it comes to reconciling the budgeted profit and the actual profit, your profit will only be reduced by the contribution because you're not gonna be paying the extra materials and labor cost on those 500 units that you are short of your target, okay? Um, and another word about variance is when we are reconciling profit, then a favorable variance will increase profit. An adverse variance will reduce it. If we're asked to reconcile budgeted cost with actual cost, and we obviously wouldn't include the sales variances, but an adverse variance there will be added to the budgeted cost because it will increase the budgeted cost, whereas a favorable variance would be deducted. So make sure you do it the right way around. I can't even speak today, the right way around. Fixed overheads for the month were as budgeted, and it tells us here that the budgeted overheads were 48, well, the actual overheads were 48,000 pounds, so that's the budgeted amount as well, okay? And all it's asking us to do is produce a statement, prepare a statement reconciling the actual profit achieved with the budgeted profit for 6,000 units, product B, for the month of May 2022. Now, I always tend to start with the budgeted profit. I think the answer, I haven't actually got it in front of me at the moment, but the answer might well do it the other way around. So um, we can have a look at both ways. But the budgeted profit, let's see what we planned. So the budgeted profit, we planned to sell 6,000 units at, well, the contribution was 33 pounds and 30 pence, okay? And then we're gonna take the fixed overheads off. Okay, so let's do 6,000 units times the 33 pounds and 30 pence. That's 199,800. And then if we take off the fixed overheads, that will tell us that our budgeted profit, one five at one eight hundred. So just to reiterate that, we're looking at the standard cost per unit here, the structure. So each unit is gonna earn us a contribution of 33 pounds 30. And that works like gross profit. So you work out how many units you plan to make times the contribution um, and then deduct the fixed overheads. Okay, so you can already see that the, um, the actual profit there is 150814, which is lower than the 151. 800. So we're now going to prove that by chucking all these variances in. So the sales price variance, that's fine. We can include that as it is. So £16,500 favourable. So we'll be adding that to the profit because a favourable variance will increase profit. But remember the sales volume, we only want the lost contribution. So we don't want to stick the whole sales volume variance in. We just want 500 units times the lost contribution of 33 pounds 30, which is 16,650. I'm gonna put that in brackets. It's an adverse variance because there was a short force. So whenever you make and sell fewer units than you planned, that's always gonna be adverse and an adverse variance will reduce profit. Okay, then we can put the materials variance in. So the total materials variance, it's not broken down into um, price and quantity, price and usage. 
Um, so it's 3025 adverse, that is going to reduce our profit. And then the labour variance was favourable by 2189. So that will actually um, increase our profit. So fingers crossed, that should equal the actual, oh, no. Yeah, that's right. Yes, I was just thinking about the overheads then, but they were the same. So yes, I had a momentary lapse of reason there. So the actual profit, which we're given here, is 150814. So luckily we don't have to do fixed overhead variances. We'll save those for when you reach the dizzy heights of AAT level four um, and beyond. Now let's just check that the maths work. So we're starting with 151800, adding the 16500 favorable variance, taking away the 16650 adverse, the 3025 adverse, and then adding the 2189. And there we go. That now reconciles. I'll give myself a little smiley face there. And that's 14.2 completed another six marks. So I'll stop talking and let you get on and have a go at these questions. Thanks very much for watching.